were talking about the other day, and you mm -hmm. were saying, you know, going for fourth down was something you guys wanted to do. Yeah. You wanted to put, you know, teams on the board, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, when you got a chance to look at those six that you went for, mm -hmm. um, what were some of the main takeaways you had? What were some of the main things that Yeah, you, you know, it's disappointing to be two for six, for sure. You know, you go, you, you, every one of them you go in, you know, and thinking hey, we got a great chance to get it doing this based on what you've seen them do and so forth. And, you know, the first two we, we were two for two and it was rolling pretty good and then we missed the others. So, you know, some of it, I think, um, you know, we, we missed a throw here. We didn't, we didn't get, uh, I don't remember exactly all six of them right now, but um, I think for us, you know, we had some opportunities and we missed those opportunities. And I don't think it's just fourth down. Like when you look at our game, and I was telling our players this on Sunday, and, and it's not coach speak at all. Like, I truly believe we're very close to being a good, really good offense. But, you know, the six, seven handful of plays, whatever it is, even the last two weeks, you're talking about 10 or 12 plays, you make the play, the game changes, or, or we um, execute the play, or, you know, hey, it's all of us, you know, better call, whatever. Uh, but this, this group's getting better. When you watch the film, you can see that. That's obvious. The O-line's improving. They're young and inexperienced and getting better. Quarterback. Uh, Jacoby, I see the progress there. So, to answer your question, yeah, the fourth downs we missed on those four, and that's. Uh, but you know, that was the philosophy we had taken, uh, based on uh, studies and, and the analytic part of it. And coach, uh, you know, I'm always ready to go, and 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 when he's when he says we're going for it, or some a lot most of the time he'll say, hey, on third down you got two downs here, which sometimes will allow you to run the ball on third down, which is. You know, that we almost got it on one run uh, Saturday and made the fourth down shorter. But at the end of the day, we got to do a better job um, really converting on those along with third downs. I think that was kind of the story of the game. Missed opportunities uh, for touchdowns and then uh, third and fourth downs. I actually was going to ask that as well. Because, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it did seem, you know, the ball moved around, you know, pretty well mm -hmm. outside. You know, obviously the drives in and on fourth downs. What aspects of the other day do you feel are, you know, kind of sustainable for the offense moving forward? Yeah. Forward? I think um, I love the plan we had uh, uh, going back and looking at, you know, you look at it as a coach five or six times and the things that we were running, the things that we were had had prepared, I thought it was it was a really a good opportunity for us to run the football last year. If you remember, we played those guys. We didn't run it very good against them. We threw for some yards and had a punt return and they do a really good job on defense. They they try to outnumber you in the box and I thought we did a much better job of handling that. And we had some misses every now and then on first down that put us behind the sticks. But really overall, I love what we what we had planned. I think at the end of the day, when you play a pretty good team like Pitt is, you better uh, every opportunity you make right now for us, we have to we have to make those plays. Uh, you know, we don't have the ability right now as an offense to miss those opportunities and then make up for it later, you know, because you only get so many. So, and really, I think that's across college football all over the country. I mean, the, uh, the, the parity, I think, is more than it's ever been. And when you get opportunities to make plays, you got to do it. Um, and then I think, too, as coaches, we got to make sure we're doing the, a great job of putting them in the best position possible. And, you know, there's four or five plays that I wish I'd done something a little different, but that's always. I mean, that's going to happen every game, and I understand that. But uh, the guys are, are really, really, uh, the attitude's great. The guys are busting their tails, trying to trying to make plays and get better. But we got to seize those opportunities when we get them. Chip, I was going to ask you, because you were just talking about the third down. Yeah. You got, you've gone through six games where you had a quarterback, mm -hmm. you start one game, and then you tried another. And then yeah. There's been a lot of trouble mm -hmm. of trying to sort that out. Yeah. How much is that sort of? You know, I mean, it takes time to sort of become cohesive, all these little yeah. things. I mean, do you think that that's had an impact sort of trying to sort out the quarterback? You, you know what, maybe, but really, you know, we rep it during the week. We give them the looks during the week. Um, at the end of the day, I think it comes down to, you know, each play, like they'll play cover three, let's just say, versus one play. Well, then that play looks this way. Then it's man the next look, and it's this way, and quarter is the next, and then six. And, you know, so getting the reps of all the different looks, I think, for a quarterback is important. And an inexperienced quarterback, a lot of times, they haven't seen all that. They don't have that, 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 uh, that library in their head, you know, of, hey, you know, four verticals versus cover two, this is what I'm thinking. Four, vertical, four verticals versus cover three, I'm thinking this. And, and that's really elementary uh, an example. But I think the more he plays, the more he gets comfortable with all the different uh, concepts, you know, uh, that go along with it. And then third down's its own animal because now you're adding pressures, right? You're adding 
Uh, they're a four down team, but on third downs, they like to get in odd. Now I've got to make sure I got the protection right. I mean, there's a lot that goes on up there between the center and the quarterback and the running back. So um, I think the better he, the more he plays, the better he has, he has gotten and, he, and he's shown that. And uh, again, at the end of the day, if you make some of the plays that we have the opportunity to make, maybe you're not in those third longs. You know, you want third to be, they're down to be four to six, and you got a higher percentage or, or a better chance anyway to convert. How much did you use analytics when you were at Troy? You know, I did. I did use it there. Um, you know, as a head coach, um, I it was kind of new then a little bit. Not new, but newer. In other words, we signed up for that service while I was the head coach there. And um, I can't sit there and tell you that I did exactly what they said every time. I think there's human element to it. Um, but you know, it's uh, it's something that I think if you really research it and study it, it does make sense. And you see guys across the country using it. Uh, at the end of the day, we had our opportunities convert and didn't. You know, we had the fourth and short at the end. I feel like we had a great opportunity. I didn't like the spot as, as any offensive coordinator wouldn't. But um, I really didn't like the spot the play before, if I'm being honest. But anyway, um, you know, you get the ball there, and I think I think 28 to tell you, he, you know, we we got to get that first down, and uh, and then you know, I think. You know, a couple of the throws, we just were a little bit off here and there. And, you know, that's, that's, what, that's what gets. When you go to fourth down, there's risk and reward with it. And, um, you know, I think we got to do a better job just converting. Now, you know, a lot of this stuff is, is determined on, like, Thursday. You kind of yeah. have an idea if you're going to use the mm -hmm. in those situations. But you, how, how often do you find yourself in the moment thinking, you know what, I've got to go with the gut here mm -hmm. and not the analytics. And you've got a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. What is that process like going through that? Yeah, well, Coach does a great job. He'll tell you on third down, hey, this is four down territory and uh, three or less, four or less or whatever, based on the analytics. So you've you got an idea before the third down, usually what it's going to be, you know? And then it goes back to what was our third down call plan, what fits versus what they show, and then, hey, yeah, I can run it here because I know we're going for it on fourth down anyway. Uh, I think last year we did a really good job of that at times when we would actually get just get the first down when we were running the ball because they were looking at throwing. So uh, to answer your question, for me, it's it happens fast. It's not as much of a gut feeling as I'm reacting to what uh, coaches kind of determined that we're going to do. And it's done ahead of time. I mean, in, in those analytics people that, that we deal with, they do a great job. They'll analyze both teams before the game, and it's a book you get every week, and it's changes. It's not just one standard deal all the time, like a, like a two-point chart or anything like that. And uh, so I think when you when you look at analytics, we used to not have that when I played and first started coaching. Uh, everything in the world world's evolving, and um, you know when when you really sit down and study it, a lot of it makes a lot of sense. I do think there's some human element to it, and the head coach makes that decision, and uh, and then we got to try to execute it. And, and really, that's kind of you know if we were five for six, maybe we win the game. And instead, we were two for six, and. Uh, so I think I think every decision I was on board with for sure, and you know we got to, we got to figure out how to execute it. You know, not really. Uh, it's hard hard to say. When I was at Troy, uh, it was in nineteen ish twenty, probably probably nineteen. I think that's when it became, in my mind, uh, probably uh, a little more common. I would say. Um, you know, there's been some guys over the years. I remember growing up, Steve Spurrier was one of those guys that did that, you know, and, uh, you know, I think he went for a fourth in like 15. One time I was watching, I was a kid or a high school coach then and converted it and everybody thought, wow, that's unbelievable. If it's incomplete, you know, everybody thinks he, he's, he's not real smart, but he throws it for a touchdown, Danny Warfel, I think. So I, I don't know. I think, I think in the last four or five years, it's become the norm, so to speak. And, uh, you know, your, your limited possessions now, the clock runs different, right? Teams are playing faster, and then some teams try to limit your snaps, so you want to take advantage. I think there's a lot of strategy that goes in it, a lot of it based on who you're playing and how, you're, how your team's set up. Chip, last year, Nate, how do, you, how do you take what you were able to get with Nate and get him going yeah. uh, to the degree that you got him going yesterday yeah. and make sure it's not – on the radar. Yeah, I agree. Obviously, yeah, he hasn't been huge part of it, and 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 uh, you know he was banged up a little bit last few weeks or a couple weeks, but uh, him, having him back healthy is he's a huge part. He's a veteran guy. He's he's got the ability to make plays in space, and we got to keep finding ways, creative ways to get him get him the ball and get him touches, and and then some of those plays, and then on top of that, the regular plays that you call the 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 coverage dictates that the ball goes to him. So you add those to it. Now he's looking at a I think what do you have ten catches something like that. You're looking okay. 13 target, you're looking at a double digit target day, which which is something we got to have, I think, and we got to get more out of that for sure. Chip, last year you guys were able to have a lot of success against Georgia Tech scoring 42 points. Yeah. But 
Coach Brown was saying that the statistics have shown that they've proved, improved a lot um, yeah. this season, only allowing 19 points per game. Yeah. What is it that they are doing that is behind that? Well, they got a new defensive coordinator, Tyler Santucci. He was over at Duke, so very familiar with him. Uh, great guy, know him pretty good. and. Uh, He's just, he does a great job of really trying to take away what you do well. And uh, when, he were, when he was at Duke, they did a good job of that. We had the double overtime game here last year. Uh, this is a different defense, I think, than what they had before. Um, schematically a little different, too, in, in coverage. But also just they've got a lot of new personnel. I think they only have maybe, I read, two starters coming back, three starters, I think, one at each level. Uh, so they got, a, they got fresh faces in there. Uh, they got some transfers. Uh, they got kind of a, a new approach, you know, sometimes when a new coordinator comes in, just a new philosophy, a new approach. And, and what I see them doing is playing extremely hard and fast, and, and, and they're going to play, they're going to pull the trigger and be there, you know. And we got to do a great job of, of keeping, them, keeping them at bay a little bit. But uh, tough defense to prepare for, good defense, similar to last week. Do a lot of, uh, they're going to they're try to muddy it up for you. Have you had any extra conversations with Nate knowing this might be an emotional week for weekend for him? No, not, not yet, for sure. No, it's too early. Yeah, you know, I think anytime you're a high school coach, you're, um, you know, you really do it, and, and the players are at that age where I think you can make the most impact on, on those guys. They're they're what 14 to 18 years old. You see them in a different uh, time of their life than we do here in college. So, you know, all I ever wanted to be was a high school coach in the beginning. I never dreamed of being able to do what I do now. So that was something that I think was. In, I think I did it for 14 or 15 years, and um, I think it, it, you know, from the standpoint of of being having a relationship with your players and making sure that's the number one thing. And today, I think that's more important than ever. I think that's a huge advantage. Uh, it's not to me. It's not just a, a business and you guys just hey come here, produce and, and get out of here. I want to have a relationship with our players. And I, I think being a high school coach where you got to deal with uh, hey my mom's making me uh, stay home and keep keep my little brother or whatever. Or hey, we got a dentist appointment today. I'm gonna miss practice. You know, and you got to find ways to get around that creatively. But I just think the personal relationship is what I take the most out of from being. I had high school coaches that were really impacts on my life and uh, really wanted to be like those guys. My dad's a former high school coach. So all those factors, I think, played a part of me getting into coaching. Chip, you, you guys have played two ACC games, mm. and you have not scored a point in the mm -hmm. fourth quarter of those yeah. two games. Obviously, I know they're different entities. Mm -hmm. but what would you say are, are some of yeah. the reasons that have hand, uh, handcuffed you? I think some of them are self-inflicted. I think we have uh, – we have, uh, you know, had a penalty here or there. We've, uh, you know, missed a throw, dropped the ball. Uh, I could really, it, could, it, it goes all the way around. You know, I'm not really into, I don't want to blame any, any people or group or, you know, whatever. Coaches, we can do a, probably a better job, I think, of giving our guys, maybe we need to go back and really look at what we're doing. But at the end of the day, to be good on offense, consistency is the most important thing. Whether you score in the first or the fourth, we're not doing that right now, and we're not, and, and that's keeping us from from really being the best offense we can be. You see spurts of it, you see you see things that are really impressive, and then you see you know a handful of plays that you're like, what in the world's going on here? And um, some of that goes back to communication between the O line, the quarterback, or or in the run scheme, who where the ID is on the mic and so forth. So. We've got to figure ways we can limit those. I think those are the things that are holding us back when you look at both of them. I think we've played some two solid defenses as well. They're going to make you earn it. But you're right, the second half has got to be, we got to, we got to do a better job as a staff of getting these guys in the second half some more opportunities to score. And, you know, the game's faster than it's ever been from the standpoint you don't get as many, many series as you used to. So we got to make them count, and that's what we're not doing right now. Jacoby has been long on a lot of the deep balls. Mm -hmm. How much time does it take for a guy in this situation to yeah. yeah, that's a good Especially question. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, that's a good question. I think there is an element of getting that feeling, that rhythm, that timing with with the wideouts. Um, I think I think that Jacoby, if you if you really look, he's got the ability to throw the ball, you know, the length of the field, the width of the field, and reach out and, and touch people from different parts. But I think you know some of the things that go into that are you know we got to make sure hey our feet are set on time, the ball's out on time. If you're late now, now the coverage is, you know, a little tougher and so forth. And I think it's, it's like I said earlier, it's all of us doing a better job every play. It takes 11 guys and, it, you know, the throw's off, but maybe the route wasn't the right depth or maybe he had pressure or a guy in his face. I know a couple of those times happened. So uh, as a unit, though, it comes down to execute. And I do think he's made a lot of progress with our receivers, getting that continuity going like you're asking about. Uh, but but I think there's still some left out there that we can that we can improve on that. Is that one of the hardest things for a quarterback? To I think so. Yeah. And 
if he gets to a point where he starts hitting on those, how much does that change? If you Changes know? the game. Like if we hit, you know, three of those balls the other day, uh, not all his fault, obviously, but if we hit those balls, I think we win the game. Now, you say that, maybe they come back and score, who knows. But my point is, is like we are missing opportunities. And, and that's what I really wanted to tell our offense on Sunday. And I showed them, I said, guys, if you look at this thing in reality, I said, because I'm, I'm not going to tell you something that's not true. Like, you're probably 15, 12 to 15 plays from at least being 5-1 and one and maybe 6-0. and oh. Now, that doesn't do you any good. We're 3-3. Three and three. You are what your record is. But the reality is if we fix these things, we have a better opportunity. The odds are in our favor to win. And that's the truth. We're not that far off. I believe that. I believe in our players. I believe in this team. And, and I think if we'll, uh, we'll get some of that stuff cleaned up, then I think we can finish this thing the right way because we got, still got you know, half the season left. And that's the reality of it. Chip, it, it, last one here. It looked like the, uh, you, you worked in the QB draw, the design QB draw. Yeah. Like a mm -hmm. times. Um, and to, to nice success, I think, on all three of them that you ran. Yeah. Um, like, you know, is that one of those wrinkles that because Jacoby is starting to gain some more experience, mm -hmm. you're able to add that to his play? I mean, are these, yeah. these are the type of things you're trying to add to his play? I think so. I think, I think the more confidence your quarterback has, and I think some of it uh, dic is dictated by the look you get, too. You know, in those formations, we were getting a look where – if, if they did what we thought that would be a good call. But it was a good thing for him because the timing of it, he timed it up great. A lot, a lot of times quarterbacks, they'll rush through it and they don't give the O-line the time to set and the D-line time to get in their rush lanes. They'll, they'll rush it sometimes, right? And it's muddy. He did a great job of being really patient. I think on both of them, maybe the third down and short one, maybe a hair fast. But you know what I've seen him, the more confident he's gotten, the more comfortable he's gotten with like you said, the whole full playbook. And uh, I think that's something that he's a good, he's a, a sneaky good athlete, I would say. That's the way I would say it. He makes plays on the perimeter. He can throw on the move. And he did a nice job there, you know, running the football. And, you know, I think he's also, we got to make sure we protect him and he takes care of himself when he's out on the perimeter and gets down on the ground some. I think that's, you know, we went through that last year, right, with Drake. So, right, hey, get down, man, go out of bounds. And I think we got to do the same with Jacoby. Do you have, do you have any plays with him under center? Um, we do. I don't know that we've seen any, we? Yeah, we had one yesterday. We flipped it. Remember that? We broke the oh, huddle and flipped yeah. it. Yeah, we've got a we got a few of those for sure. Um, again, you know, how many plays can you practice? How many can't plays can you carry? Do they fit that week? I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, and I think too, uh, you know, he's not played under center a whole lot, but he's doing a good job when we do it here. And uh, we definitely got a few that we we want to get snapped under center. All right. All right. Thank All right. Y'all have a good day.